What's going on football fans? It's your boy J.R. Clark back again. Long time absence. Sorry about that. Life's been kind of crazy, kind of hectic, but uh, I'm going to try to see if I can't kick up this uh, this channel again. Uh, you know, do some pound for pound videos. Yeah, by the way, this is pound for pound. Welcome back. If you had not been here in a while, because there's been no reason to be here for a while. Glad you're back. Glad you're checking us out. If this is the first time you're checking us out. We're glad you're here. Um, as you figure, today is the first day of the NFL draft. It kicks off in a few hours. And so uh, I'm just going to, like, you know, just talk some draft with you. Uh, talk some things that I think that the Falcons might do um, and just how I feel about this, this draft altogether. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump on into it and you know, kick it off. Um, as always, with every draft, it really just hinges on what happens in, with the first overall pick. You know, everybody's dead set that Arizona's going to pick uh, Kyler Murray out of Oklahoma, and they may. I'm not saying that they ain't going to, but just saying that they're going to do that based off of the coach that they hired um, isn't always hadn't always worked out. I mean, back in the day when uh, Greg Schiano was it Greg Schiano that went down to uh, uh, Tampa? Anyway, they didn't pick his quarterback, you know, uh, when he was, you know, coaching at uh, Syracuse or, man, I may be mixing up some people. Now it was, it was a guy up in Buffalo. Anyway, a side story uh, that none of that really pertains to it. I'm just, but what I'm saying is that the first overall pick obviously is going to dictate the pace of the draft. And I don't believe this year is going to be a major run on quarterbacks like we have seen in the past few years. So if somebody, you know, decides to trade up with Arizona, that could really just set the tone for the rest of the draft. Uh, but to automatically assume that just because Kyler Murray uh, played up under Cliff Kingsbury is an automatic lock. I mean, they just spent a, a first round pick last year on Josh Rosen. So unless they got somebody who's willing to trade with them, a la, you know, the Dolphins or even the Giants or the Patriots are, are kind of likely suspects there. But anyway, let's get into what I think the Falcons are going to do, which is the reason why you're uh, on this channel right now, is, is why uh, what, the, what the Falcons are going to do at 14. There's a lot of ways that they can go, and that's saying that they stay put at 14. There's no telling... You know, there's been a lot of rumors swirling around past few days that the Falcons are looking to jump up into the top 10. If they jump up into the top 10, um, I believe they will be going after uh, a high-end defensive lineman, if I had to take my guess, whether it be Ed Oliver or if they don't think Christian Wilkins is going to be there at 14. Uh, those are the ones that I think that they really have, like, you know, dog-eared as, you know, their guys, the ones that they want. And as TD has shown with True Font, with uh, Julio Jones, obviously, with Tack McKinley, if that's who he wants, if that's who he thinks that the team needs, that's who he's going to go after. So, um, you know, be in your seats, you know, start 8 o'clock tonight because it could go down at any point. I think uh, the most likely spot, in my opinion, is uh, Detroit at number 8. Uh, if they feel like they need to get above the Bills for a D lineman, then uh, Detroit is, is kind of where the benchmark. And, and there's been mad rumors swirling that Detroit is, is very willing to trade back. So we're just wondering what their asking price is going to be and if it's something that, that they're willing to give up. Um, I think if you get past Detroit and we haven't made a trade yet, then I think that's going to signal that we're probably going to stay put. Uh, if I had to take a guess... Uh, so if we, if we stay put, unless one of the D linemen is there, I'll, you know, Christian Wilkins, maybe Dexter Lawrence, maybe. Uh, but I would think at that point in time, you're probably looking at an offensive tackle, whether it be uh, Cody Ford, uh, Jonah Williams out of Alabama, if he's still there, or even um, uh, Andre Dillard. These are the names that have been swirling around. You know, these are the the uh, offensive linemen that the Falcons have shown the most interest in, you know. So I think the first round really comes up with either a offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. Now, there has been some traction about, um, you know, possibly Greedy Williams, the cornerback out of LSU, and, and everybody's freaking out that, hey, oh, man, if we draft a corner in the first round, I mean, what are they doing? I would agree 
but there is a logic to it. I mean, you just let Robert Alford, you cut him, you know. You've got Isaiah Oliver that you drafted last year, and then you got Desmond Trufant, who is a good cornerback, but he is not a turnover machine. You know, he doesn't he doesn't turn he doesn't get you the ball back like I think Dan Quinn would want. You know what I'm saying? So um it wouldn't surprise me if they spent a first round pick on uh a cornerback. I would be kind of disappointed, especially with uh DeMonte Casey and Fold as your potential nickel corner and they signed in this off season uh a lot of not a lot, but you know, a few like like veteran style uh, corners and and young potential corners that could develop into something. Uh, but let's speak about that for a second. The 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 off season moves that they've made. I mean, bring them back, Hageman, bring them back, uh, Claiborne, sign Tyler Davidson from the Saints. Uh, the two corners uh, that I'm blank um, their names. Uh, the Carpenter and Brown. The guards that they signed, they signed a tackle. Uh, they signed Ty Sombrello to a three-year contract. What what they have done, in my opinion, has shored up their roster to not have to force them into doing anything in the draft, per se. As in, you don't have to take this or you don't have to take that. You know, let, let them almost do a best player available kind of scenario and kind of situation. So it would be really interesting, and it also would probably make them feel pretty good about trading up, you know, about surrendering some of those nine picks that they have to move up in the first round. Because out of the guys you signed, you know, some you gave starter money to, others you gave veteran minimum to, but either way, you're not going to be able to sign all your draft picks in a sense. And what I mean by that is that you're not going to have space on your roster for that. So some of these guys that you signed in this offseason aren't going to make the roster, obviously. That happens every year. But it kind of makes me wonder if TD is preparing to package some of those picks, some of those nine picks, to, to move up to get his guy. Um, an interesting name that uh, just come to mind again that's been swirling around is uh, Devin Bush, linebacker out of uh, Michigan. Now, I don't, I don't know a ton about Devin Bush in the sense of other than I've seen him being projected in the first round. So I went and watched some uh, highlights today, just real quick highlights, just to kind of get a feel for, you know, what type of linebacker he is. Because in college, you can be listed as a linebacker but be, you know, a defensive end or, you know, be uh, what have you. So kind of wanted to get an idea of, of what type of player he is. And he looks like, you know, a good pairing to Deion Jones. If they pull that off, if, if they draft Devin Bush, that might spell the end. That, that would definitely this year probably spell the end of Duke Riley, but it might also spell the end of Devondre Campbell. Or, bear with me here, you might see Devondre uh, get moved to a different position where he can rush the, rush the passer more which would be really interesting. So this draft, man, it is shaping up to go a bunch of different ways, and I love it when it's like that. I love it when it's when it's wide open uh, as far as what teams are going to do and as far as what the Falcons are going to do. Because the Falcons are always going to surprise you. I mean, who saw Calvin Ridley last year, right? I mean, that kind of came out of nowhere, really. Uh, everybody was expecting d in there or, you know, cornerback for whatever reason. Everybody loves to, to mock us a cornerback, but... uh. So yeah, man, I am I am pumped. I am super excited about uh, about what this draft is going to hold for us tonight. And um, you know, if uh, if y'all haven't followed me, I am uh, obviously pound for pound on Twitter. Uh, you know, just like the way it is on the channel, uh, pound for pound. Uh, you can look at it. It's LB four LB on Twitter, or my own personal handle is uh, Grim eleven twenty eight, and that's with two M's. So it's G R I M M eleven twenty eight. Uh, that's my own personal. Uh, so uh, the other night I put out a, uh, a mock draft on Twitter under the pound for pound uh, handle. So if y'all want to go check that out, make fun of it, do whatever, you know, uh, you can get my full thoughts on the draft. And I'll be tweeting during the draft uh, tonight for sure. But, uh, but yeah, good to be back. Uh, depending on, you know, my schedule and stuff like that, um, I'm going to try to 
do some videos around the draft. I may not do weekly videos until the season starts up, but you know, as we progress through the off season, I'll probably throw out some videos. But let me know uh, if y'all are enjoying these. Obviously, uh, let me know if uh, what kind of format would you like. Uh, do you like longer videos, shorter videos? Um, at this point in time, I mean, obviously, I don't get paid to do this. You know, I'm doing this because I enjoy it, and I'm doing it because I like interacting with y'all. So. Uh, let me know what y'all want. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all would like to see. Uh, as always, you know, like, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff. Uh, you know, I gave out my Twitter handles. Um, as far as ones who are asking or wondering about Toby, uh, I don't know if and when Toby will join me again. Um, his work took him across country. Uh, so I'm not trying to put his business out there or whatever, but, um, uh, you know, if he gets settled and he wants to jump back on, we'll definitely love to have him. But um, until then, you got me. So uh, appreciate y'all. As always, Falcons fans, rise up.